All right, praise God. Turn with me in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6. We're going to continue the series that we started last week on if you don't like your harvest. Anybody remember the rest? Praise God. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. Again, if you don't like what you're walking in, if you don't like what's going on in your life today, change your seed. I'll do a quick recap on some of it. But first, we'll go to our opening text. This is out of Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever, say whatever. Whatever. I know some of you like saying whatever to just like whatever. <laughs> Different context here. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good for a new season. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. As I shared last week, to a great degree, wherever we're at today, in whatever area of our life, to a great degree, it's dependent on the seed that we've sown. The harvest that we're walking in, good or bad, to a great degree is determined by the seed we've sown. Now there's exceptions to that case. We live in a sin-fallen world. We can't control what others have done to us said about us, all that mess, but we can't control our response. Yes. Amen. Can't control, necessarily in some cases we can, but you can't always control certain sicknesses and diseases that attack your body, but you can control how you're responding to it. Amen. Are you going to respond in faith or are you going to respond in fear? Amen. Are you going to respond with, well, I guess this is just taking me, going to take me out. Because it's the big C. Or are you going to respond with, I don't care what name has been named, what sickness, disease has been named. The name of Jesus trumps every name. All sickness, all disease must bow to the name of the law, names, the name of Jesus. How are you responding? If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. There's three areas I'm covering with this. Last week we covered, and I know it was a big one, and that's why I started off with that, your words. The words that we speak out of our mouth are seeds. Mm -hmm. And those words bring forth a harvest, good or bad. Right. I got into some of the areas of our relationships. Relationships can grow or they can fail based on words that come out of our mouth. Whether it's friendships or whether it's a spouse. Many a marriage has been destroyed because of words coming out of the mouth of a, either a husband or of a wife or of both. takes two to make a marriage. Exactly. And one can stand clear till the end, doing everything right. But again, if that other one isn't going to do what it takes, yeah, that isn't on the other one then. But it isn't just 50-50. It's 100-100. It's all like what it needs to be. But I got on to, again, relationships with our words. And then the other area that we're up in here is again, when are you speaking out of your mouth where your faith is concerned and situations are concerned? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Again, we need to get full of God's word. So regardless of the situation we go through, we're going to respond. Unless I say respond. With God's word. Not, oh, I'm just always going to be broke. I'm always going to be sick. Marriage is never going to this. Is that the harvest you want? As I shared last week, and I wish I could say I, I came up with this. I didn't. Got it from David Crank when he preached at uh, World Harvest Camp Meeting. And he said, if you're having trouble constantly speaking negative garbage out of your mouth for the next seven days, it, add this to the end of it. And this is how I want it to be. Well, I'm just always going to be sick. And that's how I want it to be. Well, I'm just always going to be broke. That's the way I want it to be. Church is always going to be small. That's the way I want it to be. He said, do that for seven days. Is that really how you want it to be? And that's going to help you get a grip. That's right. That's good. Amen. Well, somebody, because I know how the devil can twist stuff when it's being preached. I'm not going to name any names. But somebody thought at one point last week, I had to go back because I'm like, there ain't no way I said this. But I'm just saying this, and I'm not calling a person out or embarrassing them. 
But in case anybody thought they heard me say this, I did not say this. But this person thought when I was going down the list of, well, I'm always going to be sick. That's the way I want it to be. Always going to be broke. That's all the way I want it to be. Somebody thought they heard me say, and I'm just fat, and that's the way I always want it to be. <laughs> did not say that. Would not say I'll make jokes about weight sometimes, but I'll clean myself in. But I did not, would not say that. I, and I understand how the person thought they heard that. It's because I listed all these things, and I said, if you do that, That'll help change you. And when they thought when I said do that, I said fat. So I didn't. I said do that. So I just want to clear it for Facebook and for y'all. I did not use that as a part of my illustration. Well, I'm just fat. That's the way I'm going to do. Oh God. You can use that again if that's your mentality. And that's what you're always saying out of your mouth in any area of your health. Right, right, right. It's still a good illustration. Right, right. But again, I know some people, and I don't weigh what I once did. And I'm still working on getting it down there, but. I understand it can be a sore spot with people. But even on that one, again, just as an example, when I'm out there huffing and puffing and jogging, walk jogging, I got to where I can just flat out jog now after slight warm up. This is some of what comes out of my mouth. Help me, Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say this, and some may think it's silly. Hey, it's according to my faith, will be done unto me. I'm speaking life, health, healing. Out of my mouth. I'm expect this is the harvest I'm expecting. Amen. So I declare my body is a fat burning machine. Every day that I run, I'm getting stronger and stronger, fitter and fitter. No, I didn't say fatter. Fitter and fitter. <laughs> and oftentimes, I'll, especially when I start getting tired and I still got 10, 15 minutes to go, you can do it. But we spoke again about the words coming out of your mouth. We shared out of Genesis, I'm not going to read it again, 1, 11, and 12, but basically it says every seed produces after its own kind. And that's the key one. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. If you've been speaking negative, doubt, unbelief, and all that, that's the harvest you're going to get. If you're constantly tearing people down with your words, that's the harvest you're going to get. So if you want that harvest change, you've got to change the words coming out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. That's good. Do you want to share just Part of the recap, a few of the scriptures that I shared last week. Now, this one covers last week's and today. Isaiah 3 8 says, For Jerusalem stumbled and Judah is fallen because of their tongue and their doings. What I'm getting on today is our actions. We did the same thing. Their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. We provoke the Lord. I'll say this way you tick him off. Ask the children of Israel how well they're whining, they're griping, they're complaining and work out for them when you go to heaven someday. Didn't work out too well. So you want to tick God off? And you hear some today, oh, God's not angry, he's just love, love, love. Yeah, right, read the word. <laughs> well, that was under the law, that was Old Testament. What about Ananias and Sapphira? Moving right along. <laughs> Proverbs 6 2 says, You are snared, means entrapped by the words of your mouth. You're taken by the words of your mouth. We sow seeds with our words, good seeds, bad seeds. How many times, I said this last week, have we gossiped or slandered others? How many arguments have started or escalated in our homes because of our mouth? Sometimes it's just better to take a lock, <laughs> bite your lip, walk away. Well, I wouldn't have any tongue left if I bit it off every time you talk to me that way. Well, believe God to grow a new one. <laughs> then I got on how many have we encouraged, uplifted with the words coming out of our mouth. We can destroy relationships with our mouth or we can strengthen them. We got into James 3 about the tongue being such an unruly member. With it, we bless our brother and then we curse. Blessing and cursing come out of the same mouth. This should not be. Mm. Proverbs 12, 4, 12, 14. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. Again, this is just a recap. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What are you speaking out of your mouth? 
Look at your harvest today. Look at your life. Look at what you're walking in. Are you speaking blessing and life, prosperity, health, healing, wholeness, or are you just speaking what you may see in your temporary situation? Again, anything that we go through in life is temporary and subject to change. Well, how do we change it? By our words, by our actions, and in some areas, by our giving. Proverbs 13, 2 says, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Here's some good advice. Proverbs 13, 3, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Amen. I shared, obviously, the, did get some laughs on it, testimony, basic training where I lift off, did the real corporal, and ended up receiving harvest from it. There's a whole lot more push-ups and sit-ups that I would have ever dreamed I ever wanted. <laughs> So again, there is a harvest from the words coming out of our mouth. Okay, this week we're going to talk about our actions. Again, in our text. I'm going to read it again. Well, verse 8 and 9. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Again, I've shared before part of my testimony Heavy drinker, alcoholism in the family and all that. 20 some years I haven't drank a bit. If I was to go out and quote so to my flesh and start drinking, guess what? I'm going to receive a harvest from it. Sure. And if I go out and drive drunk, kill somebody, there's a harvest. If my marriage gets destroyed over it, there was my harvest. That's sowing to the flesh. Just because Paul one place said that uh, all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. Some it may be permissible for you to quote have a glass of wine. For me, it's not. Because for me, it's a slippery slope. And I'm going to reap a harvest from it. I'm not willing to take that risk. Amen. You can go out, it doesn't matter, married, single. You go out having sex outside of marriage. Even more so nowadays. HIV, STD, and all that. Guess what? You just reap the harvest. Chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> so there's a harvest that we're going to receive based on our action. Not want to so much so focus on the negative. But there's two sides to this coin. Verse 6 says, let us not grow weary while doing bad. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. No, it says doing good. But there's a harvest if you do bad. But I want to encourage you today. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. Don't become weary while doing good. Well, I've been giving. I've been loving. I've been forgiving. I've been this. I've been that. Keep it up, church. Right. Amen. Talked this morning about some about patience and long suffering. They're close. They're cousins. And then I asked, well, who's their daddy? I didn't get to follow up with it. If it's West Virginia, it could have been the same guy. <laughs> It's a joke. Don't get mad. <laughs> but there's patience and there's long suffering. And the long suffering, and I love that. Part of that meaning is there's pressure, there's persecution along with it. You suffer long, if you will. Well, it's during the waiting season, while you're waiting on the due season, that it's critical. Again, I'm talking about actions, but the same with your words. You can be faithful in every area, and you can miss it because you start destroying the harvest that you wanted with the words coming out of your mouth. Amen. All this praying I've been doing just ain't working. Oh, she gets up there every week. You got to worship God, President. Oh, glory, glory. Well, I've been worshiping. I've been praising. What good did that? You're just destroying whatever harvest you would have received. So you continue to do good. Don't grow, grow weary in doing good. Keep talking right. Yes. Keep doing right. Because he promises us in due season. Well, when's the due season? It's his time. It's his time. Yeah. If you haven't figured it out yet, newsflash, his timing and ours often doesn't line up. Yep. 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 Preach. Mm -hmm. But we need to be faithful. We need to be patient and keep doing good so that when due season comes, when harvest comes, we don't miss it. And we receive the harvest that we believe in God for. Amen. 
So if you want a good harvest, you got to sow good seeds and how you live your life. Now, again, this should be a no-brainer for, quote, a Christian. Ones that are supposed to be Christ-like. We should be loving, forgiving, bearing with one another. I like one translation says, putting up with one another. Yeah. All you wives shout amen. amen. <laughs> but as a Christian, it should be a no-brainer. Christianity 101. Christ-like. Well, what's that mean? Read the Gospels. There you go. See how Jesus lived. See how Jesus talked. See how Jesus responded. And I purposely use that word responded a couple times because too many times what we do is we react. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Somebody says something, does something, we react out of our flesh yeah. instead of responding how Holy Spirit would have us respond in that situation. And you determine by how you respond or react right. what kind of harvest that you're going to receive. That's right. To hear some scriptures concerning actions. I'll tell you when to turn to some, but these first two I'm just going to quote. You can write them down. Job chapter 4 verse 8 says, Even as I have seen those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. Again, another confirmation that every seed produces after its own kind. Again, you plow iniquity, you sow trouble, that's what you're going to reap. You're constantly sowing trouble. Some people, even Christians, some people constantly have chaos and trouble and turmoil in their life. Why? Again, there's the exceptions. That's where you search your own heart, your own life, with what I'm teaching here, your words, your actions, your giving on. But too many times we're experiencing what we are. Those that constant trouble and chaos because they're constantly fueling that. If, good example here, if every church you've left, you've left offended, and I was talking to somebody about this earlier, you've left offended, people just always ticking you off, and blah, 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 blah. Not only will you most likely, quote, leave this one unless you get healed up, but you'll leave this one and you're going to take it to the next one. Well, what's the common denominator? Well, it's all them churches and all them pastors. No, you're the common denominator. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's Every man I've ever been with, he's just been da 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 da. They're all dogs. <laughs> what's the common denominator? You. Too many times sad to say women picked the wrong man. I've seen it over and over. Many of you have seen it. They picked the wrong man. Why well, like the I just like the bad boy? Well, what are you gonna get? That's the harvest you're gonna get. And then you got the good guy, the pleasant guy, the respectful guy over here. What are you saying? Good yeah. You had to wait, what, 80 years? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, oh. I, I cast that seed aside. Crop failure in Jesus' name. Bring it will not be <laughs> Pluck that from the root. Please forgive me. But too many times, and that's where it's self-perspective. We need to look at our own life. If there's a constant repeat of certain things in our life, quit blaming all the other people, all the other places. Look at your own heart. What are the words coming out of your mouth in all those relationships? What are your actions in all those relationships? And too many times, I mean, guys can do it too, but it seems like that's more of what you hear about are women continually pricking the wrong guys, and it's all guys or dogs and da-da-da. Well, all that you picked might have been, but there's still good guys out there. Amen. Years ago, I used to do several, and there's a supplement income, weddings on the side. And I advertise on some websites and all that. And I cannot tell you how many times I'd sit down with a couple and this Christian woman, because I'd always ask, where'd y'all meet? That this Christian woman would proceed to tell me how, and I'm not dogging this part of it, but she'd go to Christian dating websites and meet men supposed to be Christians, but right away they're wanting sex. They tell me this. And one of them flat out, my jaws dropped, she'd do FBI background checks on them. Wisdom in it. 
but couldn't believe some of the criminal records that some of these guys had. And again, God forgives us our past and all that, but some would be recent. And again, it would just prove that this person's just a player or they're this or they're, or they're that. Unfortunately, she had enough sense next and would cower down to it. And it had the guy again that came up here from whatever state it was to go to War Harvest Bible College. He was in his 40s and had had a drug addiction, but said he'd been clean for 10 months. Wasn't, and we let him rent out a room in our house. Wasn't there a month and already went out and started using. Mm. Trying to help him out and all that. And he, supposedly, again, he's been sober for a year or several months or whatever it is. But in conversation months after he'd left, I finally took a phone call from him and we're talking. And he's talking about all these rehab places and this one doesn't work. And people, people that I met at this one that I was good friends with, they've all they've died or they're overdosed. None of that works. Da -da -da. I've been to this one and that one. Da -da. And I said, what's the common denominator? And he's silent. I said, it's not a true question. I said, it's you. And then it was like a light bulb went on. And he was, oh, man, I should have you be my mentor, my counselor. I'm like, no, that wouldn't work. Because you wouldn't listen to me when you were here, yeah. and you're not going to listen to me when you're way off in another state somewhere. Right. Yeah. So we need to look at our own lives. The harvest that we're walking in today are the words that we've spoken in the past, contributed to it, put us there, have our actions. We've all probably heard it. Insane. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. That's Einstein. And that's good. Was it Einstein? Yeah. I hear it repeated often. I use it often. Yep. Again, you want your harvest changed. Change your words. Change your actions. Change the seed that you're sowing. Nothing's going to change if you keep doing things the same way that you already have. If what you've been doing isn't working, switch it up. But in the same token, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't reinvent the wheel. So if you want a good harvest, you've got to sow good seed. Uh, go ahead and turn with me to Hosea. It's a fun one to find. Yeah. It's back there somewhere in the Old Testament. Hosea, Joel, Amos. But Hosea chapter 8. Got it. Have it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Hosea 8. We'll start in verse 4. This is the Lord speaking here through prophet. It says, They set up kings, but not by me. They make princes, but I did not acknowledge them. From their silver and gold they made idols for themselves, that they might be cut off. Your calf is rejected, O Samaria. My anger is aroused against them. How long until they attain to innocence? For from Israel is even this, a workman made it, and it is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken to pieces. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stock has no bud. It shall never produce meal. If it should produce, aliens would swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the Gentiles like a vessel in which is no pleasure. Pleasure. What's all that mean? They're doing it their way, and they're receiving a harvest from it, and ain't nothing working out. Right. You can, we got a choice, church. We can do it God's way, according to his word, according to what he speaks to us, or we can do it our own way, and either way, we're going to reap a harvest. But again, if it isn't working, you need to change it up. You need to get with God. Get his wisdom. Get his directions. I'm continually... Praying, Lord, show me your blueprints, your plans for this ministry. Yes, amen. Give me your wisdom that every decision I make is divinely directed of you. Yes, amen. As he does that, as we do that, guess what? We'll see the results. But I don't want to be doing this, that, and all the other out of flesh and not seeing results from it. That's right. amen. What kind of harvest do we want? Even in this church, what kind of harvest do we want? We've got to sow to that. With our words, right. with our actions. Yeah. Again, people come in here and I thank God for it. Those that have ever spoken to us later on have said, what a welcoming, loving, friendly church this is. It's like family. Well, we need to keep it that way. Yeah. Regardless of how big we grow, we can still keep it that way. Yeah. Amen. 
I detest the ones that we visited them in the past before we started this up the first time. We had like three months when we left the last church that we served at for like two years as associate pastors. And we visited different ones. And no exaggeration, people would look at us and some of them and give us dirty looks. For showing up. For showing up. Others would greet us, would say hi to us, stand next to us, row in front of us, behind us. And these weren't mega churches either. Swore I'd never have a church like that. So we've got to show ourselves friendly. We've got to be friendly and continue to do that. Amen. Because everything I've read, it's in the first few seconds of somebody walking in a church. They've already decided, for the most part, whether they'll come back or not. And they ain't heard me, thank God. They haven't heard me say a thing yet. And I may put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> or I may change their mind or no. <laughs> but again, it's how they're greeted, how they're welcomed. Yes. And we need to stay up on that church. Amen. Turn with me to Hosea chapter 10. Yeah. A little easier to find since you're already there. Yeah. Verse 12. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness, weak wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way. Again, there's a choice here. Sow for yourselves righteousness, and you'll reap mercy. You want mercy from God? You've got to give mercy to others. Isn't it sad how so many times in the body of Christ, oh, Lord, give me your mercy. But the first time somebody ticks you off or offends you, steps on your toes, whatever, you get mad, you get offended. Yeah. Joked in the Bible class this morning, he was talking about, mentioned that, uh, talking about offense or whatever, but anyway, that, God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And I said, yes. And he lives in each and every one of us. Glory to God. <laughs> There's an Old Testament scripture that talks about divine retribution. So I just call for divine retribution on my enemy. <laughs> Joking, of course. But again, we want mercy from God. We've got to extend mercy. You want forgiveness? You've got to extend forgiveness. What you want from God and you want from others, you've got to give to them. Every seed produces after its own kind. I know none of you never know it. I've never known any of them people just always frowning. Yeah. Always sour puss. Yeah. Well, how does that make you want to respond? The right way would be to still smile. Pride, can I challenge you, encourage you? Practice this in the store. When you make eye contact with somebody, just smile real big. Do either respond with a smile or they'll frown even more wondering what you're up to or what you're thinking. You know? <laughs> I used to, I just can't think of any right now. There's some awesome, funny elevator jokes, things to do on elevators. You can go Google it later. There's some funny stuff. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the message. <laughs> but again, if you don't like your harvest, change your seed. And again, even the verse 13 here again. You've plowed wickedness, you've reaped iniquity, you've eaten the fruit of lies. Again, what we sow, we reap. You sow to the flesh, you reap destruction. Kind of already said it, but Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man who has friends must himself be friendly. Another translation, I believe it says, show yourself friendly. You want friends? Show yourself friendly. Amen. Oh, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to be around me. <laughs> How are you acting? That's the harvest you're receiving. And even where words are concerned, I don't know about y'all, but I'm this way. I do not want to be around a negative Nancy all the time. Not that Nancy's negative. Just... <laughs> or negative Ned, I'll say Ned, so she don't get mad at me. I don't like being around negative Nelly or negative Nan all the time. And all that comes out of their mouth is poor, poor, pitiful me. I like being around happy people, joyful people. And you can be going through stuff and still have the joy of the Lord. 
This is the point that the Lord's wanting us to get to. Because if you don't like your harvest, change your seed. Instead of whining, griping, complaining, moaning and groaning all the time about your situation, change it by your words. Change it by your actions. Amen. You can wander around your wilderness for 40 years if you want. Well, I'm not going around it with you. I've had my own desert experiences, thank you very much. And they weren't pleasant. By the way, I wrote a whole book on it. $10 back there in the back. Get you one. Shameless plug. <laughs> Psalm 101 verse 5 says, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, or oh, nobody hurt me, Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. Wow. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. Mm. Think about that. The one with a haughty, prideful, arrogant look, proud heart, him I will not endure. Oh God, I need breakthrough. I need you to move in my mouth. I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. I'm healed, whole prosperous, da 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 But you're full of arrogance and pride. He ain't even listening. That's right. Yeah, that went over. Sure. My iPad keeps moving on me. Ooh, scary. Can't you be off playing with kids somewhere? <laughs> she is. It's a joke. I know, me, the biggest kid of all. Turn with me to, got to find it now, 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy. It isn't always necessary to preach to the preacher. Right. Yeah, iron sharpened iron. Well, I'm always the one getting iron on. You're wrinkle free. I'm wrinkle free. The one. Yeah, I'm already hot. First Timothy. Okay, First Timothy chapter five, verse three. It says, honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home, to repay their parents, for this is good, acceptable before God. Now she who really is a widow and left alone trusts in God and will continue in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who, now all this is about harvest and your actions. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives, and these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a widow under 60 years be taken into the number, meaning those that you're helping out financially. How many you, Sally? I'm just kidding. <laughs> and not unless she's been the wife of one man. Well reported. And he's talking about widows, but let's just take this overall. Well reported for good works. If she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, yes, I've always done that. Got some strange ones lodging. If she has, <laughs> some of you will get that one later, or she can explain it. If she has washed the saints' feet, if she's relieved the afflicted, if she's diligently followed every good work. That's solid. But again, apply that. Are we? That's just an example. And they're using widows there. If they're doing what's right, if they're doing what's good, then they're going to reap a harvest. And the harvest is we help them, we take care of them. Yeah. And then he's talking about the younger ones, that they're just still going to be after their flesh and all that kind of mess. And that's a different story. Again, we're going to reap a harvest from our, not just our words, but our actions. Right. It's going to get real fun now. Husbands and wives. <laughs> First Peter three seven. Husbands. Love your wife. Love your wife. 
<laughs> this fiery dark who's coming from. <laughs> Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. <coughs> you know, talk about all the healings Jesus did, that all the books in the world could contain it. Well, if you ever try to find the books that could contain how to figure out a woman, they don't exist because the world couldn't contain them. Just remember to say <laughs> that. was a joke. Sorry, nobody's laughing. <laughs> Dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to his wife. Amen. Man, what harvest are you walking in? Are we honoring our wives? Yeah, they're to submit, they're to honor me and all that. Well, you need more of an understanding on what all is entailed in that. But we're to honor them first. I right. know this didn't go over well. Amen. Some manly man. Got to keep her in check. I smack her once a week whether she needs it or not to keep her in line. I've actually heard that garbage. And I've heard of people joking, but not just said it, but I detest child abuse, wife abuse. Eddie, she's abusing you. She already threatened me with concrete shoes this morning. Eddie abused <laughs> If I threatened me with concrete shoes just because I licked my finger and wiped it on her glasses. <laughs> and then I said, do you know why I did that? So why? Because I can. Well, I got some concrete shoes. <laughs> Good old sea man. But we need to honor our wife. It says, as to the weaker vessel. Didn't say she's with her weaker, possibly in strength, but a whole lot of other areas they're not. And I know we're kind of joking her or not. Ain't no part of me would ever want to give birth. Nope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oftentimes, pain Jenna's been in. Jill was in, and their damn first time Jenna with Elijah. And how long is her? I forget how long her labor was. Ended up finally having to have a C-section, but she's laying there quivering from the pain because it had been gone so I had to leave the room. Couldn't stand to be in there anymore. I'm like tearing up seeing my firstborn in here in such pain and anguish. Or times some of the tests, Emma and Elijah, some of them that they've had. Big old bad brave papa, I'll go out and haul and pray. I ain't gonna be in there watching them scream at the top of their lungs as they're sticking tubes down or doing some of that stuff. So women, if you think women are weaker than men, muscle wise, yes, but in most other areas ain't no way. Can I get an amen, women? Amen. But see, it says as being heirs together, we're heirs together. God created Eve out of Adam's what? Rib, not his backside. But walk alongside us. Right, right. And you do know why God created Adam before Eve. Because he didn't want a woman telling him how to create a man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. I'll stick to my day job preaching. <laughs> but as being heirs together of the grace of life, <laughs> that your prayers may not be hindered. Again, man, how do, do you want your prayers answered? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. How are you treating your wife? Are you honoring her? Yeah. Are you uplifting her, encouraging her? Yeah. Another uh, verse says to love her, and this is a big one, as Christ loved the church. Right. How did Christ love the church? Right. Sacrificed it all. Died. Gave up his life. How much are we men willing to sacrifice for our life, wives? I sacrificed a whole lot a couple weekends ago, and she may see this later. Yes, she did. A big sacrifice. Deborah Call, Pastor Call's wife, uh -oh. went to a night getaway with him and talked about shop till you drop. I fell asleep on the way home from yes. Cincinnati because they <laughs> shot me so much. <laughs> Dying daily, crucifying flesh. That's why I stay at home. <laughs> but I chose to love my wife as Christ loved the church. And do something that she enjoys doing, despite it being like a messenger of Satan sent to Buffett and harassing me at every chain, chain, chain on the register. I'm just kidding. At the men's breakfast, some were there because it was an alternative. <laughs> Oops. But again, men, if we don't like the harvest, even of what we're receiving from the Lord, obviously, because it's about your prayers being hindered, but even the harvest in your relationship with your wife, how are you talking to her? How are you treating her? 
Is it always about you, my needs, my wants, my desires? Or do you compromise? And I'm embarrassed to, to share this, but my wife does compliment to the fact that I will record and <coughs> and judge and, and watch Hallmark movies with her. But I drew the line this week. Honey, if you take the Christmas in July movies, ain't no way. Because there's enough of them from November on. There's a line. I've drawn it in the sand. I will not take Christmas in July stinking movies because there'll be plenty of them you can watch in November, December, and all that. that. Thank you very much. <laughs> But man, what harvest are we walking in? Are we loving our wives as Christ loved the church? Yeah. <laughs> First Peter 3 1. Wives. Likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even, this is key, that even if they do not obey the word, they, without a word, Ladies, repeat this with me. Without a word. Without a word. Say it again. Without a word. Without a word. By the conduct of their wives. <laughs> you will not win, convert, change your husband by the words coming out of your mouth, but you will by your actions. You want to shut a man down, just keep... It's so like the, the teacher on Charlie Brown with me. Not not saying never say nothing to try to encourage her. You know, you can't. But if it's a constant, then, 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 tune in you out. Live the life before them. I've heard partial messages before. Speak to the king. Inside of every man, there's a king. Same way inside of every woman, there's a queen. There's a king. Speak to the king. Not the punk or the pauper or whatever else that he keeps manifesting. No, you speak to the king. Right. It's by your actions you'll win him over. So ladies, if you don't like the harvest, you need to change some things. If what you've been doing, what you've been saying ain't working, change it up. That's right. Same way, men. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Boy, it's getting hot in here. Man may be the head of the house. The woman see the neck and she does that in The woman was fine. Now I'm getting hot. <laughs> Just so you know, I wear the clothes that I always dress myself so successfully in. She just tells me which ones to wear. Now. No, I will ask her. This morning I asked her, this shirt really match these pants? I don't know. I tell you if it didn't say it that way. I tell you if it didn't. Why? I'm not going to let you go out of here looking like some clown and I'm married to you. But in our own lives, if we don't like our harvest, change our seed. What's the seed? Again, it's our actions. Right. It's our words. But this week we want to talk about actions, but in relationships and the job. Oh Lord. <laughs> How do we act in our job? Do we leave our quote Christian hat at home on, on our stand when we go to work? And I can talk however I want, act however I want. Well, I'm told to rest in the Lord, so I'm just going to rest while I'm working like a paycheck. No, you get fired if you're lazy and you don't work. We should be setting the standard. We should be setting the example. Every secular job that I had, even the ones I didn't like, I still did it. The best that I could with my abilities. As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. And Sean, even working at a Christian daycare in school. <coughs> Does it as unto the Lord. Because everybody that comes through there, and even sometimes some of the teachers. So church, our actions and our seeds are our seeds and they produce a harvest. So I encourage you, challenge you. More so it's the Lord. If you don't like the harvest you're walking in, look at your actions. See how you respond in situations. See how you talk to people. Is it just all about me, 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 me? 
or is it about putting others before yourself as scripture says let us not only look after our own, own interests but after the interests of others put others first again using my wife as an example <laughs> I never hear anybody here, there, anywhere say anything negative right. of her ever being unfriendly, unloving, anything like that. We were at uh, Las Margarita Buenas Noches, Las Margarita a few weeks ago, might have been a month ago now for dinner. Sitting here in a booth, all of a sudden this girl turns around this table, ah! <laughs> oh, my God, she's dying. <laughs> She used to go to New Beginnings from a little girl, spent a lot of her time in her office with an attitude and in trouble. One time even sat there, can I ask you a question, Miss Charlotte? Yeah. Why do you always have this music on? Worship music. She always has worship music on. She tells her, get the devil out of you, heathen. No, she didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have thought that. I wouldn't have said it. But. Well, no, she proceeds to minister to her. Anyway, she ministered to her a lot because she spent a lot of time in her office. Wasn't she the one with the letter? When she left, wrote her a letter. I'll never forget you as long as I live. Da, 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 da. Oh. Anyway, sees her years. She's an adult now. Has a baby. Has a baby. Is, I believe pregnant now. Wow. And just about, she did. Came out of her chair. Just, and then so did the mom. That's the harvest she's walking in. Because of the love. The greeting. And again, even all the years that they're beginning to pour it out into people. Students and parents. They don't love you. And co-workers as well. She receives that harvest from that. Well, nobody likes me, you know, whatever. What seeds are you sowing? Again, are you showing yourself for me? Are you reaching out to others? You know, I have, I'm one that, you know, I love all this, and love fellowship and all that, but I'm the type of person to refuel and all that. I need alone time. Yeah. Uh, if I'm constantly, all the time, around a lot of people or whatever, I tilt. So I refuel by being alone. <laughs> Jen at times. I'll go see a movie by myself. I don't care. Oh, Dad, you went alone? It's not like I'm going to sit here and talk to people like you always want to talk when I'm watching a movie at the house. Why it is? What that? Shh, watch the movie. Now Emma's picked up on it. Man, I must have no, I had nothing to eat today, so I didn't have to eat that dirt. I might go to a movie by myself or wherever. But again, if I was never showed myself friendly, and I do have friends, by the way. <laughs> no, I have friends. <laughs> but if all I ever did was keep to myself, never call them. I mean, I talked to Gary Rick, talked to Pastor Kevin. It's two ways. The one ways I've done ended some of them. But the ones that were to be in relationship with, again, you gotta work on it. Relationships take effort, church. Yeah. Marriages take effort. So again, no, shut up. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. We need to look at the words that we speak. We need to look at our actions. Again, if it's constant chaos, trouble, negative, busted relationships and all that, we need to look at self first. It's easy to point fingers at others, but again, how many are pointing back at you? Well, I got two because of my pinky. <laughs> need to quit always blaming, playing the blame game. Yeah. Man did it at the very beginning, still does it. Yeah. Any of us, all of us can always make excuses for why we are, are where we are. Well, guess what? Everybody has excuses. Same way we all have armpits. And guess what? They're sweaty and they stink. <laughs> so the excuses aren't going to cut. If you don't like your harvest, church, change your seat. Now, next week, we may only have three or four of you here. <laughs> because the seed I'm going to get on is our finances. But I challenge you, if you don't like your financial situation, you need to change your seed. Not just going to get into giving. There's other areas. But next week, we'll complete, Lord willing, this series on if you don't like your harvest, change your seed by talking about finances. And for your information, Jesus talked about money more than anything else. Oh, they won't be here. He's already ticked off. <laughs> no, I already do. He's preaching elsewhere next week. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Not going to make some jokes through this and all that, kind of lighten it up. But it is serious. Yeah. That if we don't like our harvest, if we don't like where our life is at, there may be some things. Notice I said maybe that we need to change. 
Again, some situations we didn't ask for. In some marriages, you know, one party's doing everything that they know to do right and all that, and the other one still goes out and commits adultery, and the marriage ends and all that. That person innocent. They didn't ask for that harvest. So don't take it as, you know, whatever situation that you're in, I'm saying it's your fault. That's not what I'm saying. But we need to self-respect. We need to look within ourselves. Holy Spirit, are there things that I need to change? And words coming out of my mouth. Holy Spirit, are there actions? Things that I'm doing that I need to change to change up this harvest? Or to get me out of this empty field with no harvest? So then we need to change it. Rick, since you're bailing out on us next week, why don't you come down and close us out in prayer? <laughs> and then if anybody needs prayer, we'll pray for you. Again, I know we have powerful, man, worship. That was just off the hook. Yeah. Expect the unexpected. Yeah. But again, if you need prayer, need us to agree with you and anything, lay hands on you, we'll pray for you. And again, don't leave out of here if you've got a need in your life. Well, he didn't call me out. <laughs> I just did. Yeah. If you have a need in your life, come down here and we'll pray for you and minister to you in Jesus' name. Let's bow our heads. Father, we are humbled by your word. And we are we are people who want to be broken in spirit so that you can use us in ways that please and honor you. Father, our harvest needs to be your harvest. We want to reap the things of heaven, and we do not want to reap the things of our flesh. We want our harvest to line up with your will. May the words that have been spoken from this message find their mark in our hearts. May we be transformed into the image of your Son, Christ, who gave his life for us. May his blood and water flow so that we can be set free from ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Amen.